think that John Kenner has probably got a real good chance. I think that he looked real good. He looks like he's been training this year, and he looks really hungry. John Kenner, absolutely. Uh, my pick is I'm going to have to go with Naughty. I think uh, his experience, I think he's hungry, and uh, I think he wants to get back on top again. I'm going to pick Kenner. Naughty Alvarado, because I figure you got ready for the tournament. I'll go for Kendler. Kendler. Who do you think is going to win the uh, finals? I think Alvarado's going to win, but it's going to be very, very close. For each player, they both seem a little tight. Play, you can see the pass was a little shallow, but uh, Naughty had trouble picking the ball up in the glass. Zero, seven, zero. Another unforced error. Both players seem a little nervous. Zero, seven, zero. Naughty even put some reverse on this, just in case it came up. One, two, three. Perfectly legitimate block by John Kindler. Nice call by the referee, John Bike. Unlike a lot of very good handball players, John is also an excellent referee. One, seven, zero. Last time Naughty was in that position, he shot left. This time he uh, drove right for a percentage score.
combination of power plus the glass. Thought he was right there, but still couldn't get to it. Naughty had Johnny at his mercy on this shot. Another rolled out for Naughty. Two, three, one. Referee John Bike makes a nice call here. There's the hinder right there. Two, seven, one. Nice rally. Both players had chances to end it. Naughty especially has an opening here and decides to go right instead of left. Keeps John in the rally. And John's finally able to get set. John wants an avoidable here. No way. You can see here, Naughty gave him a straight shot at the front wall, took away the left side wall. One, two, three. We're almost 10 minutes into this match, and the score is only two to one. Lots of short serves and forced errors. I think the crowd is waiting for someone to pick up the pace. Two, seven, one.
John got a break there. That was a potential setup that got lost in the glass. One seventy-three. Nani shows off that great left of his. Low and right down the wall. Three, seven, one. John stop play. That ball clearly hit the crotch in the door. One seventy three. Hold it. One seventy three. Point serve. John's had a lot of success with that offhand serve of his. to the corners by Naughty. Even though the shot is up, John is off balance and can't put it away. Three, seven, three. both players before the start of this match. In a moment, we'll cut away to part of that interview with John Kindler. Five, seven, three. We asked John to predict what Naughty's strategy would be for this match. Well, whenever Naughty plays me, he uh, he goes after my right side. You know, obviously, he's got a tremendous serve down the right side wall, and the glass is going to make it all that much more difficult to return that serve. Um, usually, when he needs to score points on me, he tries to get them by pushing me into the front court. If I can play Naughty in the back court. I'll win most of the rallies, and if Naughty pushes me into the front court, he'll win most of the rallies. So it's going to be, it's going to be a, a a chess game to see who can who can push who into the, the court. We'll be hearing more from both players as the match progresses. Three, six. 
Monty may have been screened by that last serve. You be the judge. Four, serving six. Smart kill by Naughty. John behind him, all he had to do was drop it into the corner. Six, seven, four. I'm sure the glass bothered Naughty again on that play. Four, seven, six. This serve lands too far past the short line and uh, too far away from the side wall. John can tee off on those serves all day. Four, three, six. Point. That was John's first left-handed serve of the match. Another nice choice by Naughty. John was waiting for a right corner kill that Naughty has tried twice already. So this time he just blows it right by him. Seven, seven, five. Another poor serve by Naughty, five feet from the side wall and with just enough reverse to set up in John's strike zone. Five, seven, eight. Someone with John Kindler's power can really get away with something like this. He hits the ball very hard and right at Naughty's feet and forces an error. serves with his right hand again. That little natural really fooled Naughty. Six, six, Ceiling, 
ceiling. Best rally of the match. Johnny thinks the ball slid somewhere on the left wall. This is John's third trip to the finals. I believe this is not his 14th finals appearance. In a few minutes, we're going to break away for our interview with uh, Nadia Alvarado. See everyone's gloves. Yeah, we're going to have too many gloves. Sure too, now. We asked Nadia how he got ready for the tournament. Let's go to that interview. I train all year, so it's not for only this match. I've been training for all the pro stops. And uh, I just haven't been winning because uh, due to the fact that the other players are playing good ball right now. And John Bike, as you saw, uh, he was playing pretty good the whole tournament. And he won three uh, pro stops. So, uh, you know, I feel confident tomorrow and hopefully uh, I'll win. I want to win. That ball hit Naughty going in. This drive had perfect height and speed. It really handcuffed Naughty. Six,
Not he made an error the first time Johnny hit him that Z. He's murdered every return since then. Second serve. See how close Johnny comes to taking out the camera with the shot. Shot to the ear uh, acted like a dose of adrenaline. Johnny's game has really picked up now. Seven, seven. I think the replay shows this was a good call. Classic example of the serve and shoot. Johnny has really hit a hot streak since he started serving left with his strong hand.
John's front court play has really improved over the years, but he still has occasional lapses like that that not to take advantage of. Well, Johnny has really handled Naughty's power so well during this match. Checks it out. Looks like it's dry up there. Okay, Alvarado serving. Point. Another front court error from John. Three errors in a row by John. He needs a timeout. 15, 7, 14. typical day in my training starts off uh, six o'clock in the morning I get get ready to go to work and uh, I work from about 7:30 till 5 30 6 o'clock and then um, there's a court club across the street from where I work where I work out um, there aren't too many outstanding handball players there but I can get a game and, and hit it around and keep my timing up with the fellas at the Big C Athletic Club um, I also schedule games in the city, I'll take after work. I'll I'll take the train into San Francisco and play at the Olympic Club with uh, some of the guys there. Things I do in addition to playing are, you know, I, I run the stairmaster, I run the stairs at the Olympic Club. I I try and run, uh, you know, two or three miles a couple of times a week. Um, if my knees getting sore, I I keep away from the running and just concentrate on the stairmaster. And sometimes I swim. Um, to keep my strength, I do a lot of light exercises with, with dumbbells, light dumbbells, a lot of repetitions. We're about to resume play. 
in their serving. The score is 14, serving 15. Watch Naughty's crafty use of the corner kill again. This is a nice example of a percentage kill. You won't see a better hit pass than this literally on the glass, all the way to the back corner. 16, 7, 14. Hold the ball. Naughty thought the ball slid, but actually I think it was a wicked reverse hop from Johnny's left fist. That left hand off the back wall has been Nani's best weapon in this first game.
both players did some really nice scrambling during this round. I would have been tempted to call a hinder right here, but I think John Bike made the right call. Not even went front side with his kill attempt. Probably would have scored if he had hit the side wall first. by John. I thought he had that one. Some of the spectators around me are murmuring avoidable. They have a good point. Johnny was directly between Naughty and the front wall. 16, Naughty is really making John work now. He's keeping him off balance with those drives. And I think John could use a timeout right now. While they're walking up the floor, let me just say that at the end of this first game, we're going to cut away to some videotape highlights of the week's other events. Of course, the doubles finals were incredible, and then a lot of people are talking about 14-year-old David Chapman and his open singles title. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it.
big serve by Nani. He's had stamina problems all year, but right now he's not showing any signs of fatigue. was a beautiful reaction by John to stretch out and stroke that ball into the left side wall. John Kindler. Not he was there, but it was just too flat. Hold it, hold it, Matty. Hold it, Matty. I gotta see. I wanna see your gloves. Yeah. We asked Naughty to that describe his fine. weekly training session. I do uh, running. I run uh, four times a week. I do some uh, bicycling. I put about 50 miles a week, and then I do some sprints along with uh, weight. Uh, a lot of repetitions, not nothing heavy, just a lot of reps. That's to get the muscles uh, strong and can last longer, uh, like in this term. Nadi also told me he's been watching his diet to make sure he takes in enough carbohydrates. Seems to have made a difference as far as his stamina is concerned. Once again, Naughty just doesn't give John anything to set up on. John knew going in that Naughty would try to draw him into front court. And John's played pretty well up there, but when these rallies get close, that front court has always belonged to Naughty. Thank you. 
incredible get by Naughty. Uh, this replay speaks for itself. During this five-minute break, let's take a look at what else has been going on at the Nationals this week. I was pretty confident going in. I wasn't sure about uh, playing Ginty, but I ended up beating him. The 14-year-old David Chapman became the youngest player in handball history to win the men's open singles finals. After overcoming Ken Ginty in the semis in a grueling tiebreaker, Chapman eased past Robert Larhoven in two straight for the title. Just as impressive was Chapman's performance in the open doubles. He teamed up for the first time with Chris Roberts and they made it to the semis. There they lost in three tough games to the eventual champions, Doug Glatt and Rod Prince. Some people say when I start hitting the ball hard, I'll, I'll just be hitting it hard instead of going for placement shots. I don't think that'll be the way it is. Chapman is also an excellent tennis player and may choose to concentrate on that sport at the high school level. I asked him how he felt about deciding between handball and tennis. It might, it might take a backseat to tennis if I get real good in tennis, but I'm still going to keep playing handball, you know, no matter how good I get in tennis. I still come to the nationals and play at least three times a week. Right now, I like handball better because I'm, I'm a better player in that than tennis. Point. Seven. Serving seven. Despite this controversial avoidable hinder late in the third game, Doug Glatt and Rod Prince went on to win one of the closest and most hotly contested finals in recent history. Their opponents were Randy Moronis and Dennis Boom Boom Haynes. After splitting two close games, the tiebreaker fittingly ended in an 11-10 squeaker. Anna Engeli successfully defended her Women's Open singles title with a two-game sweep of Nancy Khalil. Anna was never seriously challenged. Her aggressiveness and two-handed power were a perfect match for the souped-up Spalding white label handball. The women's doubles finals saw the Canadian team of Lisa Frazier and Lavona Mouloyne defeat Rosemary Bellini and Nancy Khalil in two games, 21-19, 21-10. The Rowers were furious as the level of play in all of the women's divisions continues to improve. I thought that you'd announced you'd retired from handball, but uh, in the handball magazine you'd mentioned that. Well, I never retired officially. I never, you know, everybody else thinks and talks what I'm thinking, but uh, I never announced that I was officially retiring. Mm -hmm. I had a problem with my knees. I have bad arthritis, which is uh, progressively getting worse. My doctors advised me not to play anymore. So uh, for a period of time, I took their advice, and I become uh, totally disenchanted with myself, and I gained a lot of weight, and I became irritable at home, and I, at home, and I decided to come back and play handball.
Not his dry was a little shallow, and that set up uh, John's fallaway kill. Not exactly like he wanted the shot, but that was a pretty obvious hinder. Two, three, zero. The front court is really the only weak area of John's game. And if he keeps re-killing like that, uh, Nadia's going to be in big trouble. Three, three, zero. Short. Seven, seven. This is really John's strong suit, being able to set up like this and take his time. Four, seven, zero. Another fat setup for Kindler, but this time Naughty was there. Zero, seven, four. How would you score that? A kill or a pass? short on the replay.
Bondi uh, is shooting very poorly right now. And John's red hot. Not needs to drive the ball more to keep John off balance. Naughty's starting to get a little rattled. I think he can feel this game slipping out of reach. 11 to one. Point. That was a huge natural right at John's feet. That was just too tough to handle. obviously what Naughty would like to accomplish, keeping John off balance with good drives, <laughs> pinning him on the side walls so that he has the whole court open for an easy kill. Okay. Three, seven, twelve. Nice use of the corners. When you can score on a foot high kill, you know you made the right uh, shot selection. Four, Once again, when your opponent's in deep court, it's hard to go wrong with the side front corner kill. Once again, Naughty ends the rally off the back wall with a nice big natural.
on his back wall left is Deadly coming around the corner back there. That kill was identical to the one he hit to in the first game. Six and fourteen. John's front court play has been uncanny in this second game. That's really the first big mistake he's made. Seven, seven, Nadia is steadily chipping away at Johnny's big lead. He's really only one hot serving streak away from getting right back into this match. Eight, seven, Players are taking a break. Let's take a brief look at this tape summary of John Kindler's semifinal match with Pancho Monreal. It was a battle of last year's finalists as John Kindler met defending champ Pancho Monreal in the semis. Kindler gave Pancho problems with his right handed serve. He should also thank Danny Bell, who pushed Pancho to a tiebreaker in the quarters and had Pancho on the ropes with leg cramps. The final scores were 21 9, 21 9, and Kindler was never in trouble. To the action here at the finals. Pretty good crowd on hand, as you can see. Nice call by John Bike. He's called an excellent match today. The only real controversy has come around when he's uh, been overruled by his own linesman. <laughs> At one point in his career, Nadi Alvarado probably had the greatest power serve the game's ever seen. That's why it's so amazing to see him tee off on it the way he has. Let's look at this hinder call that happened a few points back. See the contact right here, which made it impossible for Kendrick to get to the ball. Johnny made this look easy. That was a 30-foot fly kill coming out of the glass that he hit with his off hand. Both players have committed unforced errors in the last two points. This was an unpopular call with the crowd, but you can see right here that Johnny was probably screened by Naughty's body.
Johnny was right there if the ball had come up, but Nottie really leveled out just perfectly on this shot. But once again, Johnny goes offense off Nottie's serve. That one was as flat as they get. Johnny's front court play in the second game has just been superb. At the end of this point, he makes a split second decision to go side front and angle the kill away from Nottie. Another big rally for Kinder. During this glove change, let's watch this taped recap of Nadia's semifinal win. Nadia Alvarado saved his best handball for his semifinal match with John Bai. Everything Nadia did seemed to work, including this desperation fall away kill to end the first game 21 11. Nadi played beautifully against Spike, the top ranked pro on the tour, and after this match point, he left himself in position to win a possible 11th national title. Okay, the players are about to, ready to get going again. The score is 89, Kindler serving. That's the second serve in a row that Nadia's been able to kill. This rally is really typical of the way things have been going for Naughty in this second game. Kind of lingers in backcourt, so Johnny goes side front. 
even though Nani gets the ball, he can't do much with it, and Johnny ends it on the next shot. Nice job here by the referee. He could have called a hinder, but instead allowed the play to open up. Both players continue to show no respect for each other's serves. That's the third in the row that Naughty's converted. Again, that drive had perfect height, bouncing just past the short line and into the right corner without coming off the back wall. Even though Knight is behind in this game, he's used corner kills effectively throughout the match. And here's another example. Johnny has to run cross court, and by the time he gets the ball, he's really tangled up. Another beautiful pass along the glass, just impossible to retrieve. First timeout. With this timeout, let's take a look at the serving technique of Nadi Alvarado. This footage was shot earlier this week when Nadi played Jaime Paredes in the quarterfinals. The first thing you might notice is that Nadi's serve uses a three-step motion starting with his front foot, as opposed to the more common two-step two -step motion that most players use starting with their back foot. This position here, however, is uh, more traditional. Really bent over at the waist, but not so much at the knees. The result is this superb extension with the forearm much more vertical than horizontal in order to lift and guide the ball down the side wall. This is the hey. typical result. Nadi's opponent 38 feet away, lifting the ball out of the corner, with Nadi crouched and ready to pounce on any return. There have been several handouts with the score at 18-9. The problem is that neither player can get an effective serve going. Kindler kept Naughty buried deep in the corners during that entire rally.
really hard to describe a shot like this, except to point out that Nandi's uh, pulled them off successfully for about 15 years. Another unpopular call, looked like Naughty was hindered about right here and was able to recover and get to a shooting position. Johnny rallied patiently on that and got the shot he wanted, just couldn't convert. The reason Naughty won this point is because he pretty much kept Johnny off balance and on the run throughout the entire rally. Pat Kirby is sitting next to our camera, and a few points ago we taped his comments on uh, how this match would progress. So let's go to those comments right now. Have you enjoyed the, Have you enjoyed the match so far? So far, it's excellent, excellent, good, good strategy game. What's going to happen? Is it going to go a tiebreaker? Uh, I think so, yeah. Nadi is, you know, he's laboring right right now, but I think he's going to get in control. He's going to come back. It's going to be a good tiebreaker. Okay, thanks, Pat. Okay. If not, he's going to win this match, it's pretty obvious that he's going to have to find a more effective serve. This is Johnny's strength, a slow developing play that allows him to set up and move into the ball.
Once again, Kindler is successful going offense off of Naughty's serve. Nice job of positioning here by Naughty to take away that right corner. I'm surprised that John didn't appeal this. Looks like that ball might have hit the line. Another pretty close play here. That ball wasn't that flat, and as you can see, Naughty was right in the line of the ball. That was one of the first times in the match that Naughty had a chance to punish John for trying to shoot a serve, but he was just a little anxious.
This pass had everything. Height, angle, and speed. This was a super dig by John, but once again it was not his inability to put the ball away in front court that led to it. This is probably the most difficult passing angle in the game, trying to bring a ball straight back down a side wall like this. Five, seven, three. The crowd really appreciated that rally, and they should have. It was one of the best in the match. Again, the key was Kindler being able to set his feet. It reminds me of Fred Lewis here at that shuffle shot. Hopes the wall and looks like it got lost in the glass. That was a beautiful reverse by Nadi. Uh, he's won several rallies now by hooking the ball right at Johnny's feet. Well, with the score 6-4, it looks like they're going to wipe up the floor. Uh, so while they're doing that, let's go to that taped interview with Nadi Alvarado that we conducted yesterday. Do you ever intend to play uh, open doubles again? Uh, not at this point. Uh, especially with the injuries that I've been having, I don't want to damage my singles and uh, I rather concentrate, which I have been doing in the singles only. So doubles is it's always nice to, to play and to win it, but to me the singles are more important. A critical ace by Nadi, who of course is notorious for kicking it into high gear in the tiebreakers. Nice re-kill by John. His offensive right has really been superb the entire match.
Five, serving six. That was a tough serve. A hard reverse that hooked into the glass and popped up and really handcuffed John. Six, seven, six. Not as mixing and serves beautifully. That one slid right down the glass with a lot of natural. This was a great rally, a super dig at the end by John, who narrowly misses, banging his head against the wall. He really needs to call a timeout now, and I just got him on the ropes. Well, with this break in the action, let's go to our taped interview with John Kindler. In this segment, I ask him about the arm injuries that have plagued him throughout the tournament season. You may not want to talk about this, but tell us a little bit, bit about your arm, your left uh, elbow or arm or whatever it is that's bothering you? Well, I injured my arm um, in North Carolina about four months ago at the pro stop down there. I was serving a ball during a match with Richard Lopez and uh, something just kind of gave way in my elbow and it's been, I thought it was going to take a couple of weeks to get better and it's been four months and it still isn't better. Uh, so when I came to this tournament, I did some things to to make up for the deficiency in my, my elbow, I got myself into tremendous shape um, so that I'd always be in position to hit the ball properly and wouldn't have to strain the elbow too much. And on top of that, I was doing a lot of uh, rehab work at the sports medicine clinic. Um, during this tournament, I've tried to favor my right arm as much as possible and save my left for, for the big match. And, I guess tomorrow's the big match, so <laughs> if I have to leave the left on the court after tomorrow, I, I don't worry about that. I have six months to, to get it better. That was a gigantic error by Kindler that really opens up the door for Nadia to close out this match. Rally. Johnny really ran naughty with some tremendous drives. This kill almost defies description. 
falling away off balance, yet somehow Nadia still manages to guide it right down the left wall. Again, Nadi was there, but was unable to punish John for what was basically a very poor service return. Nadia made a tremendous get on the return of serve, and from that point on, he was in total control of the rally. John's second error off the Z serve. Game and match point plays set. As you can see here, Nadi had the entire front wall to hit to. That was clearly not an avoidable. 